You probably recall Devon, which was supposed to be the world's first AI software engineer. Since its release, there has been a number of different AI coding agents. But we haven't seen much content on Devon itself. One of the reasons is its prohibitively expensive monthly plan, but some of you will be able to use it for free. More on that later in the video. They recently added a $20 core plan, which makes it a lot more affordable now. I recently got access thanks to the Devon Steam. And in this video, I'm going to share my own experience, also my own workflow when I am using AI coding agents. And I found that Devon's implementation and workflow itself is very different than the other coding agents. So let's get started. If you want to follow along, you can use some of the free credits. Details are in the video description. Make sure to sign up for the core plan. First, let's talk about how is the experience of working with Devon. So it looks like a chat GPT experience. Now the primary way of interacting with Devon is to connect your GitHub repo. I've already connected a couple of GitHub repos and you can see I've been playing around with a few projects. So you select your GitHub repo and then you describe what exactly you want. So let's ask it to analyze the code base and tell me how it works. There are quite a few ways in which you can connect to Devon. One is through Slack, but you can also assign tasks to Devon in GitHub issues or through Jira or Linear. I'll show you a few working examples of these different interfaces that you can use. But think about Devon as a junior engineer or a co-pilot where you will assign it very well-defined focused tasks. For example, it came up with the initial understanding. Now it also assigns this confidence level, which is pretty neat because you can actually look at it and see how confident the model or agent is on a specific answer. Okay, now it's looking at the code base, but let me show you a couple of example projects that I implemented with Devon. Okay, in this case, I was implementing a few new features within an existing project. This is a RAG system that I created, which uses the DeepSea Car 1 model hosted on Semba Nova Cloud. So initially, Devon is going to set up the repo in a virtual environment. So if we click on this, it's actually asking us to walk it through the setup process. Now, this experience is very different from other coding agents. So for example, if you assign a task to a cursor agent, it's going to try to set up the repo or environment by itself. And sometimes they run into a lot of issues. But here, you can actually set up the virtual environment or your repo in this virtual machine. The beauty of this approach is that you are able to set up the virtual environment once and then Devon is going to keep using it. You can also give access to API keys and secrets. So here, if we click on send secrets, you can see I have a couple of API keys. Now the API keys set up here are going to be used by the virtual machine in order to access different APIs. So this project was initially using the Sambanova API endpoint, but I asked it to change it to the Grok API endpoint. So first it made the changes, tested it on its local environment, since it's actually able to use those API keys. And after that, it created a pull request. Now, this is where things get really interesting because you're using familiar tools now. So here it created a pull request. Then I had to review the pull request. Now, if you want to give feedback, you can just tag it within the GitHub issues or during the pull request. So here I added a comment. It went back and updated the readme for me with the new details. And you can also tag it on specific files. So for example, here was, I think, one file I said, it's not using the DeepSeq R1 model anymore. Can you please update it? And we went back and forth. It was able to solve those issues. And I actually successfully merged that pull request. The second task is a presentation of how I work with my team. So here is a linear issue. I usually use either linear or Jira. We create an issue or a task for an engineer. Assign them, we have a back and forth. And after that, we come up with an implementation plan. And the engineer is going to implement this. Now, Devon has integration with Linear. That means you can directly call it or assign it task within Linear. Although when I asked Devon, how do I tag it in a Linear issues? It says, I don't see Linear integration mentions in Devon's current feature. So it seems like they actually need to upgrade its feature list and knowledge base. So the way you assign a given issue to Devon is very simple. Once you connect your Linear workspace to Devon, then you can just assign it a label Devon or within your issue anywhere, you can just mention Devon and it will be able to pick it up from here. But let's look at the issue itself. So I said, I want to implement contextual retrieval 
in this GitHub repo and then use this blog post for understanding contextual retrieval. So it has to actually go read through the blog post, figure out what the blog post is talking about, and then come up with an implementation plan. But there's a twist. I said, instead of vanilla version, which requires the whole document for contextualization, I want you to use a sliding window approach for each given chunk, use the surrounding six chunks before and after to create a contextual summary and add that to the chunk. Now, if you look here, I am uh, focusing on a very specific feature and providing as much information as possible. And that's usually my workflow when working with these uh, AI coding agents. I want to minimize the surface area or the number of files of that a coding agent is going to touch. And then you want to build on top of those. So I'm going to show you a few examples. It came up with a, a list of tasks that it thinks that I wanted to implement. Again, you're going to see the confidence level, which is very helpful even for you as a user to see whether you can trust the agent for a specific task or not. Right. It also came up with some open-ended questions, which is pretty neat. So I provided my own feedback on what exactly I want. It again updated this task list. Another thing which I like about this is that I don't even have to go to the Devon's interface. This is within the familiar tools that I use on a daily basis, whether it's linear, GitHub, all the interaction is taking place here. Once you're happy, you can just click on this button. It will take you back to the Devon's interface where it basically creates a task for Devon. So this is basically the description of the task that we agreed upon. And I think I do have to select that specific GitHub repo again, and then just send the message and Devon will start working. Now, in some cases, it was pretty low in confidence. And that's why I wanted to make sure that I assign it a very focused tasks so that it doesn't start making a whole bunch of changes while it's pretty low in confidence. Now, I think I also asked it to create a UI for it after the first implementation. And here is basically the architectural diagram of how it was thinking about implementing both the contextual and retrieval part and then the UI on, on top of it. Now, I think we did ran into a few issues with the UI. All I had to do was just provide the logs of the errors within that PR. Another thing which I usually like to do is I will just ask it to implement a feature without any optimizations. And once we have a working feature, then I'm going to ask it for more and more optimizations. So here's one quick example. Initially, the contextual retrieval is implemented in a sequential manner, but then I, once that is working, then I ask it, okay, can you make it a batch processing, right? And add progress bar. Now this tends to be a slower progress, but you actually make sure that the feature is working and then you progressively add more and more optimizations. Since it's running the code base on that virtual machine, it is able to run its own tests and give you the results. But it's also very important to validate those because initially it implemented the UI and I think it ran a single test, which worked. But then for the follow-up response or the or query, it was breaking the code. And I think it had something to do with indexing. So don't just blindly rely on testing of these AI agents. You have to do your own testing. And after that, it, I think it was able to fix that as well. Now, I haven't merged the second PR because I still want to do quite a few things with this, but I think we are in pretty good shape at the moment. Now, let me show you the current working version. So in order to do indexing, I'll put the files within this data folder. I think currently I have the deep sql 3 paper or technical report in here. And in order to do indexing, I'll just call the indexing.py file on it. I'm not going to repeat the indexing process because it takes quite a while because it has to do the contextual retrieval for each of the chunk. Here is that small contextual summary that it adds to each of the chunk. Now, in some cases, the LLM is adding chunk numbers. The prompt itself can be optimized for sure. Here are the actual chunks that goes into the LLM after retrieval. To show you an example of what the system looks like, so let's do streamlet run, and I think the file that it created is streamlit UI. Now I can ask a question. Let's say, what was the cost of training DeepSeek? Let's see. Okay. So it's using a thinking or reasoning model. So you can actually see that the thinking tokens are streaming. And then it says the total training cost of DeepSeek V3 was approximately 
5.5 million dollars so seems like it got the correct answer here are all of the chunks that it used i think with each chunk you have the original text plus the contextual summary that the llm added to it now in order to see whether it fixed that second issue let's ask a subsequent question so i'm going to ask it how does deep seek v3 compares to r1 okay so this seems to be working okay it didn't break this is good so we have the thinking tokens now since it's a reasoning model i am using the reasoning model as a re-ranker as well so that's why you see the list of documents and it tries to figure out okay whether a document is relevant or not so the answer it says deep seek v3 incorporates distillation techniques from deep seek r1 which significantly the enhances its performance particularly in math and code related tasks right so the answer is correct because deep seek v3 was distilled from r1 in terms of pricing they have the 500 dollars per month team package but now there is also a core package which is pay as you go and they use something called agent compute unit or acus which i think is still a bit confusing to me but you get a certain number of acus with these packages Okay, so at the end of the video, I want to point out something which you need to keep in mind if you're working with Devon. So I noticed this sign. Now, when I clicked on it, so they have this session size. So right now, this session size is L, which I guess stands for large. If you have more than 10 user messages, because ACU is, I think, about four. So I used four agent compute units. They say to keep session small and efficient provide all important information up front in the initial prompt so i think i was using this as a chat agent which is not the purpose right so you need to be very careful you want to make sure that you front load all of the information in your initial message or prompt don't use it as a chat bot because it's going to consume a lot of acus now the second session seems to be healthy because I think I was providing most of the information through the linear issue. And then once I and Devon agreed on something, we sent in the request to the Devon agent. Now, it seems like we have to yet figure out a lot about the UI UX and how we were supposed to be interacting with these agentic systems. But these are very early days. Anyways, do check it out. Again, check out the promo code in the video description to get some free credits that will let you explore Devon. And let me know how your experience is with this agentic system in the comment section below. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.